Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'm Leanne, I'm a yoga and Pilates teacher, online coach and personal trainer, and today I'll be taking you through a 45 minute Pilates class designed to strengthen and tone the arms. I'm gonna work on some back strength and flexibility and mobility and get into some deep stretches. Also, I want this class to be de-stressing as well, so lots of relaxation, breath, and time spent in Shavasana. Let's get started on the mat. Okay, sitting tall, untucking the pelvis, shoulders down away from ears, chest proud. Knees down towards the mat as far as you can. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale as I come down. Bracing the abs coming down. Inhale. Can you get your arms over your head and past? When you do this, you can feel the warmth and tension in your upper back to mid thoracic area. Trying to bring your arms further behind your neck, making sure your head's not coming forward at all. And arms, biceps next to your ears. One more. Good. Good. Left arm comes out to the side. Inhale, rise and lateral stretch, pushing the hip into the ground. Big stretch. Inhale, back to center, over to the other side. Exhale. Deep breaths. And then we're gonna go into a forward fold. Exhale as you're walking out, keeping your hips on the mat. And then inhale, back to center. Exhale once more, walking out, feeling the stretch in the lower back, around the hip area. Inhale, arms come around the back, behind chest proud. Stay here or squeeze the glutes, the bum cheeks and rise. Feeling the tension in the lower back. Again, release down, back to center, and then back again once more. Exhale and the lift. Good. Arms out to the side, shoulder height, small circles, chest proud. And I want you to start using a little bit of a movement in your shoulder blades. So you could literally just do this moving your arms, but we're moving the shoulders as well, beginning, bringing in a warmth. Three, two, one, and back pulse. Keeping shoulder height, again, squeezing the P with the shoulder blades. Just start to feel a burning sensation in the shoulders. This means it's working. Keep sitting tall, brace your abs, protect your lower back. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna pulse up. 10, nine, eight, seven, five, four, three, two, one, over to the front for a pulse. But make sure you're not rounding the shoulders, push them back, squeezing that P between the shoulder blades. Chest proud, you can feel warmth and tension in the upper back to mid back as well. 10, nine, seven, six. So we're using the front of the shoulder now and the upper pec. And then out to the side and forward, out to the side and forward. Again, get them shoulder blades involved. Squeeze that P. 10, nine, let it burn, eight, ignore it, seven, six, five, shouldn't be painful, just discomfort. Three, two, one, and release, good. So because we've worked the shoulder area and upper trap, I'm gonna stretch off the neck area as well. I'm gonna be strengthening the neck later in side planks. We're just gonna bring our head laterally to the side, pushing your shoulder down away from ear, your ear and opening the space on the side of the neck. If you want to stretch further, bring your arm out to the side on the opposite side of what you're bending. I'm gonna extend and relax the wrist to increase the stretch ever so slightly. And they call this nerve flossing. There's a nerve that comes from your wrist all the way up to around your neck area. 
Another five, four. And we can pulse our arm up and down for another five. You really feel some warmth. One, and release over to the other side. We'll see how this side feels and can compare. Shoulders down. Deep breath. Push that shoulder away from your ear. Extend the arm out if that feels good. Moving the wrist forwards and backwards. Then we can bring in a little pulse to increase that stretch. Relaxing them shoulders, keeping them down. Good, back to center. Inhale, arms rise for five breaths. Full lungs, exhale. How far back can you get your arms now? Another two. One more, really push them arms behind your ears. Excellent. Arms out to the side, small circles, good. Just go in shoulder height. Keep sitting tall and you are working the strength of the back, keeping like this. Bring them shoulder blades into the movement. Have them move a little. Three, two, one, and pulse back. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Right back, using the shoulder blades, don't forget. Three, two, one, pulse up. 10, nine, let it burn. Keeping them shoulders pinned back, chest proud. Where are you feeling this? Three, two, one, over to center, pulse. Again, don't round the shoulders. Push them back, chest proud. Keep correcting your posture. Five, four, three, two, one. Forwards and back, forwards and back. Again, shoulder blades activated, squeezing the P between them. 10, nine, last time, eight, seven. Keep shoulder height, six, five, four, three, two, one. And release, well done. Hopefully you felt a bit of a warmth there. Back over to the neck, bringing the neck over to one side. See how it feels now. Extend the arm out, I'm just gonna pulse. Just relax the neck. Push your shoulders down. You should feel a stretch here. And over to the other side, extending the arm. Deep breath. Good, feel free to grab a drink as we move over to a cat-cow position. Whew. So spine to ceiling. First thing to move is the pelvis. Last thing is the neck. Exhaling the cat, inhaling the cow. Start off with a small range of movement until you mobilize. Notice how your back feels, any stiffness melting away, any tension. One more. Good. From here, we're going to bring our wrists a little bit further forward, so we're not directly under our shoulder. I'm going to go into push-ups or a variation uh, called four, four arm taps. So coming all the way up and all the way down if you're able to. If you can only come to here, that's fine. Just bringing a little pulse. You're still working the same muscles that need to get strengthened, tucking them elbows in. And you should start to feel a warmth or a pinching or a cramping. It shouldn't be painful. If you feel too much on your elbow, you're going a little bit too deep too soon. So just bring in the pulses. And it's our upper body that's dipping. And we're isolating the tricep, the back of the arm. Just gives you a nice toned look. Looking for 15 to 20, or as many as you can. 
you need to stop halfway through, shake off and then back into it for a few more reps. This is how you build strength and endurance. Just don't, don't give up. Three, two, one. Good. And then we want to crawl forward with our arms. So our hips and legs stay the same. We want to crawl forward with our arms and forehead to the mat. Biceps next to ears into the puppy pose. Stay here or interlace your hands and bend your elbows for a tricep stretch. This is really good for posture. Deep breaths as the tension in your back melts away and there should be a curve. Good. So what you're aiming for here, eventually over time, is your chest to come onto the floor. But at the moment, it might just be a forehead. One more big deep breath. Good. Back in the push-up position for round two, 15 to 20. Oh, sorry, actually, first um, I wanted to bring in some cat-cow just to remobilize. So we've brought in a little back bend in the puppy pose there. Just want to melt away any tension. Five all together. Good. Bringing them uh, wrists further forward. Forearm taps, 15 to 20. You'd be surprised how effective these are. You might feel this tomorrow. Good. So elbow coming all the way down to the floor. Good. Five, four, two, one. Good. Crawl forward, puppy pause. Exhale. If you stay on your fingertips, it's really good for your posture and rounded shoulders if you struggle with that. Deep breath as your head moves through your arms. And then you can interlace your hands and bend at the elbow for a stretch. One more big deep breath. Good. Back into cat cow. Remobilize. Helps with any stiffness over time. Moving the spine in a variety of ways. When you finish your last cat cow, one more round of forearm taps, 15 to 20. Another five if you can. Last ones, four, three, two, one. Good, crawl the arms out for the puppy pose. And bend at the elbow for a stretch. Biceps touching ears if you can. Two deep breaths. Good. Feel free to grab a drink as we move on to our front. <clears throat> okay, back strengthening, flexibility and removal of stiffness and shoulder work. <laughs> So we're going to start with dorsal raises to move, warm up 
the muscles next to the spine. So pushing off with our stomachs, elbows to the back of the room, get them shoulder blades involved, squeeze the pee in between them. Trying to get up as high as you can, knees off the floor if you're bringing your feet up, good. Another 10. You should start to feel a warmth. Really good for opening up the front of the posture. Five, four, two, one. Good. Then from here, and extend the arms out to the side and lift for 10 toe taps. One, two, as high up as you can. Five, four, three, two, one, release. We're gonna push our hips back into child's pose, knees together. Bending the other way to help with stiffness. Feeling the tension melt away. One deep breath in. Good. The next inhale, we'll come up into the down dog and paddle them heels out. Bending at the knee, hips up to the sky. Relaxing the neck, looking at the toes. Good. We're going to come down onto the prone position again. So you can do the dorsal raises again, or we can go into the floor angels, arms extended out to the side and over the head. So think floor is lava with your hands, don't touch the floor. So because your arms are further away from the body, it's a lot harder, but make sure you're getting the shoulder blades involved. Five, Four, three, one more. And then we're gonna hold that position in the swan and toe tap, 10, nine, eight. Five, four, two, one. Good, hips shift back to child's pause. Tension release, exhale and inhale. into down dog, hips up to the sky. How does it feel this time round? Relax the neck. Maybe move the neck side to side, hip side to side. Good. Well done. Next, we're gonna make our way over to the sides of our stomach. So we work on Strengthening the back and sides of the core. I like to go onto hips here rather than full. I feel like you get a better range of movement. So hips higher than parallel to bring in a curve in the lower, yeah, sorry, in the sides of the. Looking for 10 to 12. Pause at the top for an ab squeeze. Good. And then when you've finished your last rep, you've got the option to release or hold. 10. Deep breaths. Feel the tension, the side of the core. Five, four, three, two, one. And release. Let's stretch around the pelvis. So bottom knee forward, top knee back. Inhale and exhale as we turn over. Pushing your hips into the ground, opening the space on the side. Arms should be over your head. Good. And you can look at your thumb to make it more challenging. One more big deep breath. Good. Same side. So we are working the shoulder as well. So if you feel it on your shoulder, just shake off and then back into it. You are strengthening it. Another 10 to 12 when you're ready. And then an option to release it or hold. 
Really important, these ones, for hip strength stability. Another four, three, two, one, and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release. Good, let's stretch it out. Whew. Inhale. Can we go a little bit further over, further this time? So you've been strengthening your neck as you've been holding the side plank there. And now we're stretching it if you've got your neck relaxed to one side. Good. Feel free to grab a drink as we move over to the other side. Okay. <laughs> and as always, if this is your weaker side, just be patient with it. Uh, just match the same reps though. So 10 to 12. Hips coming all the way down and touching the floor to get the full range of movement. Eight. Elbow directly under your shoulder. And hold or release. Four. Four, three, two, one, release. See how far over we can get on this side. So it feel tight in the same area. <sighs> Pushing your knee down to the floor. Good. Round two. Whew. Maybe you're ready, 10 to 12. Seven. Deep breaths, one more. When you finish your last rep, hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Release, well done. Inhale, let's try and get further over this time. Maybe your arm over your head a bit more. Keep trying and you're gonna improve on mobility and flexibility. Well done. Moving into the semi-supine position on the back. as we work abs. So a spinal stretch and abs. Mini spine stretch. Knees are up in tabletop, slight point up to the ceiling. Rib cage tucked in, belly button into spine, and the lower curve in the back is gone because you're pushing against the mat, okay? So you're starting position. We're just gonna rock side to side, lifting one hip off the floor at a time. Keeping that tension. It's like a little back massage as well. Arms out to the side for stability. And I want you to edge a little bit further over and widen that gap between the hip and the floor. Keep the tension in your lower abs. Five, four, three, two, one. Then we're going to go into the full range of movement in the, in the window wipers, all the way up, all the way down. If you can, to make it easier, don't straighten the legs. And enjoy that stretch and movement in the lower back. Keeping your abs engaged. Can you feel the connection below the belly button? Let's take your time, every rep being quality. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, rise. One more. Good. Hug and roll side to side. Inhale, arms rise in semi-supine. 
pause with full lungs, getting all the oxygen in, and then a slow exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale. One more. Good. Legs straight up to the ceiling. Again, check your core engagement, rib cage tucked in, belly button into spine. And we're just going to bring in a little pulse. Think about getting the hips up off the floor ever so slightly. And where are you burning? If you're able to keep the back flat against the floor, come down a little bit further. But your back must stay flat. Ten all together. Three more. Two. One. Good. Hug and roll. I think that's the most I've ever been able to keep my back on the floor with my legs coming down. It's definitely a challenge. Back into semi supine. Inhale, arms rise. Three all together. Pause with full lungs and slow exhale. One more big, fill the lungs. Excellent. One leg in tabletop and the other one as straight as you can get it for single leg raises whilst keeping the back flat as far down as you can go. So this will be a lot easier to keep the back flat. We're training that core connection to push against the back. I'm just gonna check. If you can't keep your back fully against the floor, don't come all the way down. Let's check. Excellent. I think everybody, will. Hazel's checking herself in. Am I right to have a check? Let's swap over to the other side. <laughs> endurance. It's called endurance, guys. Just as many as you can. Last five if you can. Four. Watch out for any hip clicks as well. That's a sign that there's a breakdown in the core unit. So we'll try and correct it. Good, one more. Oh, well done. Inhale, arms rise. Those are tough. One more. Next, legs straight up as you can get them and hips off the floor for hip kicks. So roll in one vertebrae at a time up, one vertebrae at a time down. Sort of curving in that lower back. Five, four, Three, two, one. Good. Inhale, arms rise. Lots of relaxation breaths. Last exercise, toes pointing to the ceiling. For 10 reps, you're just going to try and touch your toes. Three, coming down with control. Five, four, let it burn. Three, two, one. Oh, well done. Inhale, last three breaths. Let's begin some good deep stretch work to release tension and stress in the body. Hips shift to the right, knees over to the left for a good spinal twist. Arms out to the side. Hips should be stacked, shoulder down on the mat. 
and settle in. Every inhale, push your belly out, which you'll feel the stretch more. But then the next exhale should release tension and have you sink into the floor more. On the next inhale, as you push the belly out, on the exhale, I want you to breathe out like you're fogging a mirror and you're making a little sound. So we can completely empty the lungs and get a better big breath. It slows down the exhale as well. If you want to increase the stretch, straighten that top leg and hold on to the back of it. Again, shoulder down on the mat. One more big deep breath. Good. Bending both knees, carefully using the weight of them. Shift into semi supine first. There's a bit of a reset. Do you feel where you've just been stretched on that one side? How does it feel? Shift your hips over to the left, knees over to the right, arms out to the side. Can you get your shoulder down on this side? Settle in. Deep breaths with the exhale, making that sound. You just feel the tension release. And when you bring in that sound as well, I feel you get better quality breath work. you want to extend the leg on this side for a deeper stretch, feel free, but shoulder back down on the mat. One more big deep breath. Good. Bending both knees. I'm going to move over to the side. Your knees are faced. So we're in a fetal position. And then we're going to make our way over to the front for some cobra or sphinx. So we're just going to settle into this position for a back bend. How does that feel right now? If that feels okay, we're going to bring our elbows in a little bit more. We're not directly under our shoulders yet, unless you want to go straight there. Inhale, pushing the belly out, chest proud, feeling the tension of the stretch, sorry, in your lower back, in the base of your back. So your spine is meant to have this mobility, uh, this flexibility, which is what we're working on right now. Getting used to this position of a back bend. We've done a back bend in this uh, midsection in the upper back. And this is for the lower. If you want to increase it more, coming into Sphinx, elbows directly under your shoulder, squeezing the bum cheeks to protect that lower back. You'll be able to raise a little bit higher. You can stay here or you can go into seal, straightening the arms, coming up a little bit. So make sure you've got a good squeeze and clench in the bum cheeks. Pushing your hips into the ground, chest proud. 
inhale and then the next exhale carefully lowering back down to reset notice how your back feels and we're going to go into child's pose shifting the hips backwards good and feel the tension releasing good for stiffness I'm going to come over to the left, pushing the hip down away from the rib to open up that side. Really lean into that stretch. Good. And over to the other side, over to the right, hip down, leaning right over. Deep breaths. See if, you, see if you can get right deep in the hip, the stretch. Good. And making our way over to Shavasana. Corpse pose. Arms out to the side. If it's more comfortable to be in semi-supine for your back, for a bit of support in the lower, feel free. Otherwise, Shavasana. I just want you to observe your breath. Deep breaths. Inhale through the nose, nice cooling feeling. Filling the lungs, bring the ribs out so you can get more oxygen into the lungs. Making sure your belly's rising along with your chest and ribs inhale one two hold one two exhale three two one I want you to start to feel the weight of your body in the mat every inhale fill in the lungs and exhale releasing more and more tension in the body sinking in to the mat feeling the weight of your heels and ankles the backs of your calves and your pelvis and the little curve in your lower back feeling heavy in the mat and your shoulder blades the backs of your forearms and elbows Relax your jaw, have a little space in between your teeth. Relax your forehead and eyes. And imagine your head on a velvet, a soft velvet cushion. Take a moment for gratitude. Every breath you take is a blessing. Every move you make, I'm joking. <laughs> Notice your environment. The body's starting to feel heavier. Every time your mind wanders on anything else, bring it back to the breath, the anchor of the mind which keeps you present and in the moment with your body. You should be very proud of yourself for taking time for yourself and the body this week. can stay here or on the next inhale you can make your way up into a seated position to practice some alternate nostril breathing the pranayama very smooth Kate. 
So we're going to use our right hand and these two fingers. So we're going to fully exhale with the left nostril closing over the right. And then we're going to inhale only with the left nostril. Close it over with the index finger and exhale through the right nostril completely. Inhale through the right. Close it over, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close it over, exhale through the right. This is balancing and relaxing the central nervous system, your fight and flight responses. It's calming the breath that you're in control of right now. Sitting tall, making sure you're filling them lungs and have a slower exhale than you inhale. can practice yogic breath work as you inhale your belly inflates your ribs rise and your chest rise in that order and on the next exhale your chest falls your ribs fall and your belly empties in the three stages One more cycle, make them count. A longer exhale, a bigger inhale. Namaste, thanks for coming this morning. I hope you sleep well.